Fran Tarkenton. Fran Tarkenton. Fran Tarkenton was the master quarterback of all. I was going to run, scramble, whatever I had to do. He was the man who seeded the word scramble into pro football. As a quarterback, my mission was to make my teammates better. In business, my mission is to help people. I was not going to give up ever. I like to make things happen. I am an entrepreneur. And now, Fran Tarkenton. Welcome. This is the Fran Tarkenton Show on Sirius XM Stars Channel 107. We're glad you joined us. We'll be here for the next two hours. And what we do every Monday night is uh, bring you very, very smart people talking about subjects that are in the news. You can ask them questions. Uh, you'll learn a lot. And tonight, for instance, we've got uh, 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 Dr. Kevin Sabat. Uh, who's a former senior drug policy advisor for President Obama, and he's going to talk about uh, the legalization of marijuana, and which, of course, as you know, has been legalized in Colorado and Washington State. Is that a good idea or a bad idea? You'll be surprised at his comments uh, uh, coming forward, but you, uh, you can uh, call in uh, and, and weigh in on this and ha- have an opinion if you like in our call number. Uh, is 855-FRAN-107. That's 855-372-6107. Should marijuana be legal? Dr. Kevin Sabet, former senior drug policy advisor, thinks the move to legalize pot beyond medicinal use, as recently happened in Colorado and Washington, is bad policy. With former congressman and recovering drug addict Patrick Kennedy, he founded Project SAM, which rejects the war on drug but opposes pot legalization. What are the smart, effective alternatives to the current laws and how best to implement them? This is a timely and vital national issue with long-term legal and social ramification. Dr. Sabet, thank you very much for joining us. Talk to me about your opinion on the legalization of, of, of marijuana uh, uh, in, in Washington and Colorado. Yeah, I'm happy to do that. Thanks again, Fran, for having having me on. I'm honored. Um, well, essentially, I think that people are given a false dichotomy when talking about marijuana policy generally. Uh, people are given uh, two choices. Uh, on the one hand, uh, stick with uh, current policies, which have been characterized as throwing people in jail and a war on drugs, etc. And on the other hand, uh, you know, the alternative to that, let's legalize, make a little money for government and and for our communities and, you know, undermine the cartels because we can legalize marijuana and no one's ever heard of a cartel dealing with, you know, Budweiser. Um, and, uh, you know, it might actually have some good. And uh, we, you know, P- Patrick Kennedy that you mentioned, and also a, a conservative commentator named David Frum, we're, we've really put together a bipartisan coalition of folks coming together and saying, you know what, we may need to reform current policies, that that probably makes sense. We, do, we shouldn't be sending people to jail for marijuana only. We shouldn't be um, using a lot of law enforcement resources, and we definitely need more prevention and treatment. But on the other hand, do we really want to legalize another addictive substance? We have alcohol and tobacco as our examples, and they're cheap as ever. They're easy to get. More kids use those drugs than marijuana combined as well. More people, 52% of people regularly drink. 27% of people regularly smoke tobacco cigarettes, 8% smoke marijuana. Do we want to make that marijuana number go up, especially given that today's marijuana is not your Woodstock weed? It's a completely different drug. And we, when you look at the science and, and our board of directors, which is a big group of public health professionals, we've come to the answer, no, let's not legalize because it's a, too risky of a choice given the possible consequences. Instead, let's get some smarter policies. Let's do more prevention, more treatment. There's much smarter enforcement. And, uh, but let's not fall into the same trap we did, frankly, with our other two legal drugs. Talk to me about marijuana addiction, alcohol addiction, both bad. Uh, yeah. Uh, and, and, and you can get as addicted to, to pot as you can to, I guess, alcohol. Sure can. I mean, one in every 10 people who ever smoke marijuana in their life will become addicted. That, you know, that's 10 percent. It's not 90 percent, but it's something to worry about. Even worse, though, if you start in adolescence, and this is what parents need to understand with the way the adolescent brain works. So the adolescent brain, you know, before age 25 is not the brain when you're 40 or 50. And that brain, which is priming and becoming the person, you know, the mature 
brain that it will eventually be and the life that it will define, that brain is altered by anything. It's altered by memories. Sure. It's altered by alcohol. It's altered by whatever. It's also altered by marijuana. And we're learning today that today's marijuana, which has so much more THC and is so much stronger than it used to be, uh, affects adolescent brains in a very, very profound way. Things like learning and IQ, um, memory, judgment, these things are, are, are affected both short-term and long-term. So you, one in every six kids who start, not one in every ten, but one in every six, will become addicted to marijuana if they start. And by addiction, wow. I mean, you know, they, they know they have a problem and they want to stop, but they can't. Yeah. And that's a problem, and that's a big enough problem, for I think, for American parents to worry about. And the addiction, I guess, is just as hard. Once you're addicted to that drug, I, I would, I've got so many people in my life that, that are uh, or, or fight uh, or recovering alcoholics, right. and they have a absolute horrific time. Uh, you know, they'll say, uh, stay, stay off the, the booze for, I've had right. friends stay off for as long as 10 or 12 years and then go right back on and tell me it's just so hard to quit again. It is. I mean, what we've learned about addiction is that it's chronic and relapsing. And so, uh, when you when you you know when you're in recovery, which is when you're not using, it's great. Um, but but it's it's easy to go back there because your 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 brain remembers, um, yeah. you know, the 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 pleasurable sensation it gets. Yeah. And so it, it is very hard to break. It, people can break it, though. We have millions of people today yeah. living in recovery, and they're testaments to how, you know, how important it is that pe- where people go to treatment and stop. Um, but, but uh, you know, at the same time, it, prevention is much better than treatment. <laughs> so let's, let's prevent future addictions. And we've seen with alcohol and tobacco how they're relentlessly advertised. I mean, look, you're just talking about the Super Bowl. Obviously, we talk about sports a lot on the show. Yeah. I mean, it's not any coincidence that the beer ads, you know, during games yeah. – are are probably the best commercials on TV. Am I wrong? <laughs> no, you're 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 right. Let me just reset this thing, Kevin. Uh, this is the Fran Tarkenton Show on Sirius XM Stars Channel 107. We're glad you've joined us. You're uh, listening to Dr. Kevin Sabet, who's t- uh, former uh, Obama senior drug policy advisor. If you'd like to weigh in, uh, give your opinion of uh, the legalization of pot, he called this number eight five five Fran 107 eight five five. Three seven two six one zero seven, and we have a caller, Kevin uh, Ma- Magdaddy from Maryland. Uh, I guess you're a Ravens fan, uh, but Magdaddy, uh, talk to me. I think they should legalize it. You think they should legalize it, and why do you think they should legalize it? Because they would get our like our economy wouldn't be so shitty. They would get us out of everything. I'd love to comment to that. <laughs> yeah, you can. Go ahead, Kevin. <laughs> well, that's a, it, I, if only that were true. Let's look at alcohol and tobacco. We've legalized those, and, and they're both addictive substances, and they're both used by way more people than marijuana. You would think with that logic that we, you know, our economy would, do, would be doing great, and we'd be getting a lot of tax revenue. The bottom line is we're not. For every dollar in tax revenue from alcohol or tobacco, do you know how much we have to spend in social costs? Ten dollars. <laughs> so it's a really? horrible investment. That's not the yeah. right kind of investment. Instead, let's invest in stopping use before it ever starts, and that's much better for our economy than the hundreds of millions of dollars that will be lost uh, because of treatment, because of lost productivity, because of accidents. The British Medical Journal just came out with a, the most comprehensive study on driving in marijuana, and they said today's marijuana causes your car crash risk to double when you're under the influence of the drug um, than w- versus when you're not on the, uh, under the influence, when you're not using. That costs money. It costs society money, health care costs, accidents. So, uh, you know what, it sounds great, like we'd be able to make a lot of money, and a lot of people think that, and I could see why that's appealing, but the bottom line is we lose money when more people use marijuana, not, not gain. Kevin, uh, do you see more states legalizing it uh, uh, or... Or do you think that uh, the experiment in Colorado and Washington will go amok and they'll rescind that? What what is your thought? It's going to be really interesting. There's no doubt that there's a very well-financed movement to legalize marijuana in this country, and they've frankly cut their long hair and traded in their hemp shirts uh, for Armani suits, and they're doing very well. So i got to hand it to them. Um, They're running very good campaigns. Uh, by by you know by by getting people to believe what we just heard the caller say that it's going to be a revenue uh, generator. The other argument is we're not going to have um, cartels anymore. We're going to lower violence. Um, all these arguments that don't hold up to any evidence. 
um, they've been able to successfully present. So you know what, Fran? I don't know. If, if, if the experiments run amok, like you said, in these two states or the federal government comes in and, and, and does something, you, it could backfire. I mean, we could actually – you're right. We could have, we could have this so, not happen. It, it, time will tell. So in, 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 uh, in Washington and Colorado, I guess – their state government uh, voted and 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 made it uh, made it legal, right? I mean, was it? Well, uh, what happened was people voted for it. So in the last ah, they had a they had a referendum, right? They had a referendum, and so they had about um, in Colorado several millions of dollars were spent on the yes side, and not that I, mean, I think a few hundred thousand on the no side. In Washington, there was nothing spent on the no side, and about three million on the yes side. So and you know, the three million were uh, coming from. Pro. Uh, uh, any any organized group or just the, well, the, the marijuana the, smokers? A lot of, there's a there's a group called yes. There's a couple of organized groups. Marijuana Policy Project, uh, George Soros, and the Open yep. Society Institute. Because George oh, George, Soros, oh George is supportive, huh? Oh oh yeah, he's been a big financier of legalization uh, ever <laughs> since the or late '80s, actually. Oh, good old and George. All right. of all drugs, by the way, not just marijuana. <laughs> okay, we're going to take you. we got more calls waiting on us. This is the Fran Tarkington Show on Sirius XM Stars Channel 107. You're listening to Dr. Kevin Sabet, uh, former Obama senior drug policy advisor, talking about the legalization of uh, marijuana in both Colorado and Massachusetts. We have Alex from Indiana. Alex, uh, weigh in here, son. Hey, how are y'all doing tonight? Well, We're doing fine. I'd just, like, just like to say that personally I feel that marijuana is not an addictive drug. I started when I was close to 10 or 11, and I have quit and had to stay quit because of my job, current situation. And quite honestly, if they legalized marijuana, I think everybody would be in a lot better position financially. And honestly, we wouldn't have as much violence out there because most of our violence stems from marijuana sales and stuff like that. And the gang violence would actually go down because they're not worried about who's selling what, what's selling that. All right, Alex, we thank, we thank you for your opinion. Uh, Kevin, talk to us about Alex says it's not addictive. What say yeah, you? Well, well, there's a couple of things. I mean, first of all, you know, it's, it's great to have an opinion about addiction, but you can't really have an opinion on the science. And so the science is very clear when looking at, you know, hundreds of thousands of people and millions of people who have used marijuana and other drugs and, and the controlled, very careful studies that have been done about addiction. So I'm very happy that he, you know, yeah. stopped after using when he was so young at age 10 yeah. or 11. That's, you know, good for him. And he was part of the majority of people who are not addicted to marijuana once they start it. Um, but again, for a minority of those folks, they do get addicted, and, it, and that minority can cause a great problem. The other thing that he, this, the caller said was about vi- the violence issue. And if only, that again, that were true. First of all, marijuana markets are not re- actually really violent. I mean, frankly, most people get marijuana from a friend or relative. Um, it's not a, a transaction, that, you know, sort of when you think about a drug deal like in the 80s yeah. with crack or when you think about heroin. I mean, it's, it's usually not like that. So, or, co- or co- cocaine is or more, cocaine, more problematic. So, right, exactly. So, and the other thing is there have been some exhaustive studies done showing that um, you know, cartels only get probably 15 to 20 percent of their revenue. Uh, these are the Mexican cartels from marijuana. Well, frankly, we grow better marijuana in the U.S. People grow it, they sell it, they give it away. It's not really a violent market, so it's not going to. It's not going to. Uh, do much for violence. Frankly, if you want to get rid of the Mexican drug cartels, you have to focus, A, on the other expensive drugs like cocaine or, or, or heroin or, or meth to some extent, and B, you have to focus on the other things these people are doing. I mean, these cartels are involved in human trafficking, first and foremost. They're involved in piracy. They're involved in Frankly, Al-Qaeda was just cited yesterday in a news story as being involved with the uh, billion-dollar underground tobacco industry. So just because you legalize it doesn't mean you're not going to have you know, characters, uh, shady characters dealing with it. Has the usage of, of marijuana uh, risen over the years, or is it stagnant, or what? It actually has gone up recently. So it's sort of in around, starting about 2007 when there are a lot of these medical marijuana dispensaries were in Colorado and California and all around the country and people started accepting medical marijuana. You have seen a steady rise in youth use and overall use of marijuana. But I will tell you, since the 70s, you know, the heyday of pot, since the mid to late 70s, there's been a major reduction in marijuana use overall. So if you look at the long view, there's actually been a reduction. All right. Uh, we have Teresa from California. Teresa, do you want to uh, ask Dr. Sabet a question or make a statement? Either one. Glad to have yes, you. Uh, I actually was just um, listening, and I 
I heard you mention that if we legalized it, we wouldn't make as much money. Our economy wouldn't do as well. But I'm just curious because of all the millions and millions of dollars we spend on drug-related charges in housing prisoners and people in jail for marijuana charges. That's, that's a good question. That is- uh, that's, a, that's, a, that's a great question, and you would be right, caller, if we did actually house and jail people whose only crime was smoking marijuana, but that's not the case. I mean, you talk to a cop, they'll laugh at you if, they, if you, when you say, you know, do you focus your resources on people with, a, with one joint in their pocket or walking down the street, or do you bust down doors when you think somebody's smoking pot in their mom's basement? It doesn't happen. There's, people are not rotting in or even spending any time in our prisons uh, for small amounts of marijuana. Now, there are people that are arrested along with other crimes or or, in, or, or or are arrested, let's say they, they, they're in a public space and they're smoking a joint in New York or somewhere, and they are arrested. And they're usually, um, if they're not detained for 12 to 24 hours, they're released and they have to come back and see a judge and pay a fine. That happens. And so we can talk about what happens with that, but, but people are not in our jails or prisons because of smoking pot. So that, that, that wouldn't happen. Thank you, Teresa. We appreciate your call. Uh, one another question, uh, uh, Kevin. Talk to me about the synthetic forms of the drug that are out yeah. there. Well, there are a lot of synthetic forms, and and they can be deadly and, and especially worrisome. And these are things that basically people in a in, in these sort of with a good uh, with a good understanding of chemistry have been able to alter. Uh, marijuana and change it uh, so that it has a different chemical composition than than what we would normally think of as marijuana, and it has many of them have very different effects, hallucinogenic effects. Some of them are synthetic marijuana; others are synthetics of other kinds of drugs. Like mm-hmm. when you hear about bath salts, that's yep. not the marijuana; that's a synthetic cathinone, is what we call that. And that and those things are sold oftentimes uh, in a gas station or a quickie mart or something, and it just says not for human consumption. And that's how they get around the law. And unfortunately, they evaded the law by doing that. And now states are finally, after you know, dealing with deaths and emergency room admissions and all these kinds of things, yeah. a lot of states are waking up and figuring out how to deal with these. But it's been a cat and mouse game. It's been very, very, very difficult to deal with those drugs. But they can be deadly. You're listening to the Fran Tarkington Show on Sirius XM Stars Channel 107 and also listening to Dr. Kevin Sabet. Uh, former uh, Obama senior drug policy advisor, talking about the legalization of marijuana, which has been legalized in the states of Colorado and Washington. We'd love to have you join uh, join this conversation. The call number is 855-FRAN-107, 855-372-6107. John from Ohio, welcome to the show. Hey, uh, I was curious as to what scientific studies the doctor is referencing. I'm not arguing that the chemical compounds in the marijuana today are not addictive, but uh, I'm suspicious that the people in these studies that are, quote-unquote, addicted to their marijuana have other addictions. I just think that the marijuana may have gotten there first. I mean, they could be addicted to cheeseburgers. They could be addicted to masturbating. I mean, where, where is the line drawn with specifically marijuana? Yeah. No, that's a great question. You can be addicted to all those things. And the question is, what are the effects of that addiction? And what are the, um, and so what are the societal effects of it is kind of for policy. But the studies are actually, um, that you, if you actually go to our website, this is the time where I get to plug SAM, if you go to learnaboutsam.org, learnaboutsam.org, we have a plethora of studies on there. We just launched a few weeks ago, so we're still updating them. The National Institutes of Health has also sponsored a lot of these studies that look at the addictiveness of marijuana. It, it's, it's really scientific fact it's been it's been looked at over and over again about uh, how to define addiction this is done by you know the American uh, Psychiatric Association it's done by major legitimate organizations who have really looked at addiction and decided what the definitions are and and, and what that means but you know we can throw around these words again the question is what are the effects of it and and it, for a lot of kids it can have major effects in terms of learning memory attention and and all for adults also motor skills driving um, and this could, you know, this translates into costs for society, whether it's cost to your employer from being absent, absent whether it's cost to um, society because of health insurance and, and hospital admissions. There are 400,000 hospital admissions every year, ER admissions, because of a marijuana acute episode. That usually means like a psychotic episode that somebody might have had. Now, that isn't 
a majority of the time that people use marijuana, and I'm not saying that, so we have to be careful not to be overblown in what we're saying. But again, it's enough to, to cause us some problems. Uh, tell me a little more. I, I, I know that you've uh, – uh, Patrick Kennedy, and yeah. he's the son of which one of the Kennedys? He's son of Ted Kennedy, the lion uh, of the Ted Senate. Kennedy. <laughs> Uh, he, he's a, uh, a recovering drug addict, right? And he's joined you and partnered right. with you with this project, Sam, that yep. rejects this war on drugs, right? It rejects both dichotomies. It rejects a war. We don't want to lock people up in prison for using pot. Yep. So I agree with the earlier caller. Yep. But we also don't want to legalize because we learned the painful experience of alcohol and tobacco. And basically, Fran, what happened was when these things were legalized in Washington and Colorado, he called me and said, because we had worked together when I was at the White House and on other issues. And he said, uh, you know, I'm really concerned because this threatens my recovery and other people's recovery. And I said, well, what do you mean? And he said, well, we're going to be normalizing this. It's going to be in our face. It's not good for people who have these addictions. And and it's not good for kids. And I've looked at the science and, and been kosher to all of those, the, the science that's gone on. And we need, to, we need to change the conversation. The conversation has been about, you know, does weed come from the devil or does it come from God? Yeah. And, and, you know, so which way are you going to go? And, and rather than that kind of loaded language and rhetoric, we said, let's stick to the science. And we talked to public health experts from around the country, and um, they agreed. And so they came on board, and, and that's why this is starting. I think people are realizing yeah. we, we've made all these mistakes before with other addictive drugs. Let's not do it again. Yeah, good for you. All right, we've just got a few more minutes for this sure. segment, but uh, Kevin, we got a couple more callers that I want to get in. Laura right. from California, uh, from Colorado. Welcome to the show, Laura. Hi. Yes, I just wanted to say I was married to a guy who smoked pot, and I didn't think it was a big deal, but it is a big deal because it's just like any other addiction. It's whether it's alcohol or, or anything else. I mean, he he had to get high every half an hour, and it was it was not good. So. Well, That's thanks for the call, good. Laura. Thanks very much, uh, Christina in Nebraska. Hi, I just wanted to know, um, I think a lot of times I'm in the mental health profession, yeah. and what is forgotten is that starting with marijuana, smoking pot at an early age, such as 10 or 11, um, is actually a mask for, you know, mental health issues such as um, maybe some schizophrenia. Right. Or right. bipolar. So, if you want to elaborate a little bit on that, sure. I think that would be fabulous. Well, I'm That's really glad you brought that up. We, yeah. we would be really amiss if we didn't bring up the mental health connection. I mean, I, people know Patrick Kennedy's cause has been mental health and making sure that Americans with mental health problems get the same kind of insurance coverage as those with physical health problems. And so, you know, people say, well, why are you interested in the marijuana issue now if, if you're about mental health? And what he says, which is true, is that, you know, this is, it's a, there's a huge link there. And so, and by the way, the link does go both ways and so the scientists are still trying to dissect that but we know people and especially kids who start using marijuana early they have a much greater chance of triggering psychosis and schizophrenia and to a lesser extent depression so oftentimes as the caller said it also is masking that and so it's a way of people coping but on the other hand it also precipitates that so scientists are actually seeing how it goes both ways and if we care about mental health, which has been the cause, you know, Patrick's devoted his entire life to, then we can't just put aside the marijuana discussion and sweep it under the rug. We have to deal with it in, in, in a science-based way. So I'm really glad the caller brought that Christina, up. Christina, thanks for your call. You're, we got you're, great, great calls tonight. Uh, yeah. Sarah, we're going to get you in here. You're here in, in Georgia. Uh, welcome to our show, Sarah, and ask uh, uh, Dr. Sabet any question you like. Thank you so much. I'm so glad that you're talking about science because the one thing that I always tell my daughter and her friends when we're talking about drug use, it's been proven that smoking marijuana will permanently change your EEG, which is your brain waves, right. and it affects the frontal lobe. And even after you stop smoking, they don't go back to normal. And I think people need to know that it can permanently change your brain forever. So the longer you smoke, the more it's changed. It also can affect thyroid function and also how your brain functions as far as vascularity. Right. You won't get as much blood to the frontal lobe. Right. And I think people forget to think about it. You know, it might be a natural uh, compound, but it doesn't mean that it affects our body naturally. Yeah, no, that, those are some great points. And, again, this is why we need to get the science out there. And, and we don't want to overstate it, but we also don't want to understate it because kids – they look
look at cocaine and heroin or pills, for example, and they may say, see, an, you know, you can have a heart attack immediately or you have a quick over, an overdose and just die. And so there's this immediate effect. With marijuana, you don't have that. You usually don't have, unless you have one of the people with a psychotic episode, you don't have that immediate effect. So a lot of kids just think, well, what's the big deal? My friends are doing it. They're getting def- decent grades. You know, they, they seem like, good, you know, cool, cool guys. Why don't I do it? And what we need to see is this is this has long, can have long-term damages, and so kids do need, do need to learn that. So I think that was Kevin, a great um, comment. Great callers. <laughs> great callers. Kevin, you have been off the charts great. Uh, you've made us smarter. This has been a great discussion. We, we thank all of you callers for joining in the discussion. Stay with us. We'll be back right after this message. This is Fran Turkington. I've always believed in the power and the inspiration and the intellect and the work ethic of the American people. We'll be right back 